This whole atmosphere of the Alpine city is fantastic. Why is it so special? I couldn't be happy about this little rain. We have just almost lost our umbrellas. Museum of Modern and Contemporary Art of uh, Rovereto is definitely a place to visit because it is so special. It has an outstanding architecture and it has a very rich collection of uh, Italian contemporary and modern art, especially from Italian artists uh, of the 20th century. And personally, I quite like contemporary art and I like uh, Italian contemporary art because uh, I have to say, guys, I'm not sorry, Italy is the birthplace of the vast majority of uh, art styles and um, contemporary art is no different. Futurism was born here in 1909 with the Manifesto of Futurism written by Filippo Marinetti that um, called for renewal of art, of literature, cinema, music, even politics, rejecting the past and moving with the fast speed with which the world was moving back then with the second industrial revolution in progress. Uh, it called for uh, yes, energy, for modernization, industrialization, with, which was quite um, fine with the uh, values of that time, with what was going on historically in that time. And Rovereto was a special place for futurism because one of the most prominent Italian futurists, Fortunato De Pero, lived here. And there is even his uh, museum, Casa d'Arte for Futurista De Pero, which I think is also worth a visit. But today we are concentrating on the Museum of Modern Art of Rovereto. And I can tell you for sure that this is definitely a place to visit at least once. Now guys, we finished with the museum, it's starting to rain a little bit, but it definitely will not uh, ruin our stay in Rovereto because I absolutely love this city. As you can see, the architecture here is mm, quite similar to the rest of Italy, however it still feels like you're in a different part and it's kind of close to Austrian architecture and this whole atmosphere of the Alpine city is fantastic with the mountains that you can see from basically any point in the city. I absolutely love it. I've been missing mountains so much. And just look at this place, at this square with the fountains. It's just such a, it looks like a dollhouse, like, you know, uh, a doll module of a city. I absolutely love it. And I like that there are so many things to see and so many things to do. And we're just at the beginning of our trip. Come on. The mountains around Rovereto are insane and as I've just said before in my other videos, guys, I highly recommend you to ditch the highways and take the regional uh, roads because that way you can enjoy the splendid panorama, the one that we saw when we were coming here. We try to avoid the highways when possible to explore more, to see the real Italy, to see the smaller towns that these regional roads are passing through and to see the views, and the views was spectacular. Now guys, we are in the Cafeteria Bontadi. Uh, this is one of the oldest coffee makers in Italy. Uh, they were making coffee, they were roasting coffee since 1790. And uh, today they are considered among the best coffee makers. Sorry. It's quite nosy here anyway, but I hope it doesn't affect the sound. Anyway, we took a uh, cappuccini and we also took some sweets and I can't wait to try them. 
there are uh, two types of coffee that they use, two types of coffee beans they use both depending on uh, the coffee type they are preparing. So just for your information, there are these two types called uh, Arabica coffee beans and Robusta coffee beans. They are quite different in their quality. Arabica has a sweeter taste with some chocolate notes, while Robusta is a bit more bitter, a bit more harsh as uh, its flavor. I personally prefer Robusta. Anyway, um, it really depends on the coffee type and on which coffee do you personally prefer. And here they also should make quite exquisite um, milk foam and I'm gonna try it right now and I will tell you then what wh why is it so special guys it's really good I have to admit it's very very good here they also have a museum of coffee roasting of coffee making and they also run uh, short courses for people passionate about coffee, they run the courses of preparing coffee with the mocha, which is the most traditional Italian way of preparing a coffee. And for professionals, they run courses in perfect espresso making and in perfect latte art. And latte art here means not exactly the art on the milk foam, but preparing the perfect milk foam in its consistency and its look. And I think they quite mastered it. Guys, Rovereto is such an alpine city, just I mean, directly so, because we're in the Alps, and I couldn't love it more. It has a very typical for the Alps uh, landscape and uh, urban plan with these very narrow wiggling streets that I love and with uh, teeny tiny piazzas, teeny tiny squares that resemble the um, uh, places in Austria or in Switzerland. And uh, I like that Italy is so different that you can uh, drive a bit further north or further south and find yourself in a totally different location with totally different architecture and style and i think this is the beauty of this country and also the weather here is divine i couldn't be happy about this little rain and the the temperature because escaping the heat of bologna was so good and i absolutely like it that it's quite cool here you know not only this area both spectacular landscape with the mountains and also very cute um, beautiful architecture but this region is also very peculiar and it has been very peculiar historically uh, it used to be the part of kingdom of italy under charlemagne and then it was a part of uh, the holy roman empire ecclesiastical territory from the 13th century on it was then secularized and absorbed in, into the austrian county of Tyrol after the Napoleonic Wars and then it remained uh, under the Austrian government until the end of the First World War when this area was uh, a place of lots of battles since it basically found itself on the front line between Austria, Hungary and Italy and after that it was finally joined to Italy and after the Second World War the autonomous uh, region of, uh, uh, Tr of Trentino, South Tyrol was created and since then this region gained uh, a very notorious uh, autonomy and they even have their own government now despite being part of Italy and their own legislative assembly. Now that we actually need a fountain now with this magnificent weather, I love it. I'm enjoying it so much. This city and the landscape, the mountains around and this weather, absolutely. Besides the stunning architecture and absolutely magnificent views that you can admire from here, even from the city, I absolutely like that there is uh, there are a lot uh, of bottegas, artisanal shops and little cafes and this city is quite calm and peaceful and also very clean and I think it could be a perfect getaway if you want to relax a little bit from bigger cities and take a break from the city life and just enjoy slow-paced life, a slow-paced holiday, uh, sitting in the cafes and maybe walking somewhere and enjoying all of these uh, artisanal shops. Some of them are closed today sadly because it's Sunday and uh, yeah, you know, it's still perfect, I like it. We 
we've decided not to go to Fortunato de Perro's house and uh, head straight here to the castle. The castle was built in the 14th century by Castelbarco family, a noble family from this area. And then in the 16th century, it was passed to the Habsburgs and remained uh, in their possession until the First World War. Inside there, there is now a war museum. So if you are interested in uh, weapons and army and military stuff, I think it's a uh, it's a good option for you to visit this museum. Uh, as you can see, there are lots of things to do here. Whether you are uh, an art lover, whether you're a history lover, whether you're interested in weapons, you can find something for you to do in Rovereto. And if nothing else, if you're not interested in any of these things, you can just walk here and admire the views. Guys, this place is known as Casa dei Turchi, the Turkish house. And there are a few legends surrounding this place. This house has more than 400 years. Now there is a bed and breakfast inside. So just for information, you can potentially stay there. And when it was built, local people uh, believed that this house housed a harem for a Turkish merchant, which is not exactly true. Indeed, there were some Turkish families uh, living here during the Venetian uh, Dominion because they were Turkish merchants. Uh, but the reason why this house looks like this is that the, uh, there were families, so there were women. And back in time, Turkish women were uh, quite reserved, they led quite a reserved life. And while their husbands were away for work, they stayed uh, at home. And to protect their privacy, these kind of balconies were built. That at least what historians say. Some say also that there was some guardians on this uh, bridge. And well, actually, they didn't make this uh, women's life very peaceful while staying here. So to protect them, these kind of balconies were built. I don't know which one is true, which legend is true. However, that what we have today. A very peculiar thing about it, very peculiar house. So untypical for Italy, but I absolutely love it because I uh, secretly love Oriental architecture and Turkish style. and. I think it's very beautiful. And that's it for today, guys. The rain is getting so hard and also the wind is absolutely crazy. We have just almost lost our umbrellas. So I'm saying goodbye to you. And uh, I hope you like this video. Don't forget to put a thumbs up, comment and share it with your friends so that we can explore more even in these weather conditions. Uh, and if you're new here, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and hit the bell button to get the notifications of the upcoming videos to see more Italian travel. Thank you for being here and enjoy your day!